Welcome back, everybody. It's time for another guide, and this week, as the title suggests, is going to be the Angevin Empire. The reason why I'm covering the Angevins is because somebody asked for a guide regarding Great Britain, and while playing that guide, I made a couple of realizations that can apply to an Angevin guide, too, that I never realized before. So I want to come back and recover this just so I end up covering everything that can make you guys have a really strong playthrough. So first things first, estates and privileges. Again, I'm not granting any of the monarch power bonuses. You need to revoke the English Valenage as soon as possible. And I can't do it this time because I did not get the crown land in any of my parliament actions here. The moment I can either get that parliament or I can seize land again, I'll be able to revoke this and then grant all three of those privileges. So that's one. Two, I'm just granting out a couple of specific loyalty boosting privileges here. Except for financial demand, this is really no loyalty, but it does give me a lot of income, which will help me pay for advisors to keep myself afloat while I'm having a bad ruler and, well, no real monarch power to speak of. So let me go ahead and just hire some level 1 advisors. Really doesn't matter who they are as long as I have them. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the continent as I did before. If you haven't seen what I do, basically I'm simply going to go through and exploit all the tax development on the continent. You used to want to do it with manpower because the English mission tree required you to have high manpower to get a subjugation CB on Scotland. That's no longer the case. Instead, you're just going to take the, the money and you're going to unstate this state right here so you can concentrate development and then up here in Normandy to do the same there. And now that you've pulled as much development out of the continent as you can, we're going to release Normandy, we're going to release Gascony, we're going to hand these three provinces over to Normandy, and then we're going to scootage both of these guys. This way when we are at war with France in this first war, they can't be sieged out, which means France gets no war score but also we get no war exhaustion because we don't want to be fighting them as much as possible. And let me go ahead and actually turn on the scootage because I have forgotten to do that before, so make sure you do that because otherwise they're just going to occupy it. Thankfully it won't be any war exhaustion for you, but it is war score you have to deal with. Send these two guys to the north, hire the free company right there, and delete both the Montgomery Fort and the London Fort, because realistically, no one's going to be anywhere near you. Now that that's done, we have all the setup we need down here, except for two more things, and that is granting the strong duchies and granting the nobility integration policy. We just don't want to pay as much, we want to pay as little diplomatic power as possible to get these guys reintegrated once we are ready to take on France. But time to pick up our allies. We're going to pick up Castile. We're going to pick up Aragon once we can. We're going to pick up Austria. And Burgundy in my game is willing to ally, but you are likely not going to have him willing to ally in your game. So if that is the case, you do not need Burgundy for this. I am going to pick up Burgundy because of course I'm going to pick up Burgundy. But if you do not have that as an option, I will talk about how to deal with Burgundy once that becomes a thing. So for now, I'm simply going to go through here and on pause by day and pick up these alliances come on you know you want to come on there we go and now I'm basically going to sit back and wait I'm going to hopefully be able to get rid of the vantage by getting getting the right privilege here or the right Parliament issue and I'm going to be waiting for a couple of events to fires so I'm gonna pause the recording and I'll bring you guys back when it's time to talk some more so I'll see you then and welcome back, everybody. So the Surrender of Main Vent fired really, really, really early. So obviously, I'm going to have zero help taking on France. And I really don't feel the need to fight through all of that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take that CB. I'm going to pull back one of my guys. And I'm absolutely going to declare for subjugation against Scotland. This will call in France. And as you can see here, now that I'm at war, this is still here. I can either give them Maine, which, why, or I can just tell them no, and that automatically forces France to back down, which ends up costing them prestige, opinion with Provence, and some uh, nobility loyalty, which should drop them into the red range, which just slows them down a little bit and causes some slight annoyance. With that done, though, I'm going to move my guys up. I don't know why that did that. And I'm going to use these guys with an admiral to keep my navy area clear. 
The only time I've ever had a problem doing this is either I'm not paying attention and somebody lands up here, or Scotland allies Burgundy and France, which is very, 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 very rare. And I still won that, you just have to do a lot more building of galleys to get ready to push off the Burgundian navy. But in this case, should be fine. I'm going to keep the French from landing, slowly work my way through Scotland, and eventually get a peace with France that I can come back later. Do not click this mission. If you click this mission, you're done. So do not click it. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go back to this and fight this. I'll bring you guys back when it's time to talk some more. See you then. And welcome back, everybody. So I've already pieced out the Scottish War, but I did want to briefly talk about everything that's happened. Now, I just pieced out Scotland, as you can see there, now a subject. I have a very long truce timer with them, and I have one now with France as well. Now, here's the thing. As you can see, the War of the Roses is fired. If you're playing as Great Britain, and the only chance you have of picking up France as a personal union is that Hundred Years' War event, you cannot let the War of the Roses continue. You must crush it. And that costs you a lot of manpower, a lot of time, a lot of money to do so, but it protects your throne. The reason why is they can't actually break your country and force a ruler change if you're at war. So while you're fighting France, and you finally get it to the point where you're able to get the personal union, if they have you fully occupied, you're going to lose the personal union. You'll finish the war with France and force the personal union. The next tick, they'll change your ruler, breaking the personal union. So you need to crush the, the War of the Roses. If you're going Angevin, though, you will get another opportunity for the personal union. So you can take your time. And because that is the case, you have a choice. As you see here, I have a 4 5 1. That's not bad for ruler options out of the War of the Roses. But this guy's a 5 5 4. So I'd rather have him on the throne for those extra points. In addition to that, there is one benefit, but one downside to doing this. The benefit is, is that any of these troops for the Pretender Rebels become my troops. So it's like having 20,000 extra manpower right before I start romping through Ireland to crush all of them. And that is a downside because it will crush your economy in the meantime. You will be losing a lot of money. Now I will say you can use give me one second, I just clicked out of it, this button right here to sally forth out of this fort and sometimes out of London if they're a smaller stack, but in this case they won't, allowing it to progress faster. But the downside is pretty simple. Because I wasn't able to do this mission, it's 10% more aggressive expansion to force the subjugation onto Scotland. So look, make a choice, just be aware, you're going to be paying slightly more aggressive expansion which really doesn't matter because most of the people don't care what I do to Scotland. They're too far away and a different culture group, but just keep it in mind. With that being said, I need to let these guys finish, and then I'm going to start consolidating all of Ireland, but I cannot declare because if I do, they can't break me if I'm at war, and I need them to break me before I continue on. In the meantime, I'm going to be improving relations with Normandy, Gascony, and Scotland, because I need to remove these two from the map, and I will eventually move Scotland from the map, but that's going to be after I take the Isles from them as well. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Oh, and I just want to point out, because the surrender may happen before this did, this will usually fire pretty quickly. Once you yourself own no provinces on the continent, you get this event where either you can lose a stability and France doesn't like you, or you gain a stability, you lose your personal core down here in Armagnac, and France likes you a bit more. Regardless of whether you're taking the personal union early or not, definitely go with the first option, because free stability is always nice, and then having that incre increased uh, opinion will make it easier to keep them from breaking free. See you guys in a second. And welcome back, everybody. So they just broke my country, and this is the first time it's happened, but they did reduce the amount of troops. It was 13,000, now it's five, so just keep in mind you might not get all of them, and it does cost you prestige, I forgot to mention that. Just wanted to point it out there because I didn't want to be misleading somehow. All right, well, time to go consolidate in Ireland and make all my money back because, yeah, I took quite a bit of a financial hit. So I'll see you guys in a second. Oh, and you can delete this for now. It doesn't do anything for you. Scotland won't break free, and no one's going to be invading from this direction, so I'll see you soon.
And welcome back, everybody. So it's been about 20 years since I last talked to you. So there's a couple of things I want to cover before we talk about the next part of the guide. But before we get to them, I do want to talk about Burgundy, because as you can see, I got the Burgundian Inheritance. And the thing is, is that two-thirds of the time, they're going to start off rivaled to you. So it can be difficult to get the Burgundian Inheritance, though if you can get it, that's substantially better than anybody else, of course. Now, how you handle the Burgundians rivaling you at the game start is kind of simple. You can either choose to attack them with, say, Austria and Castile or Aragon, because they will usually have one of those guys that do not like Burgundy, and have them come in and help you and make them break the rivalry. If you can do that and then take your time to improve relations, you may, again, may, be able to do it quick enough where you can roll marry him and make you eligible for the inheritance even though you can't ally him because his trust will be low. Or even potentially getting him as an ally as well, which is always nice. The other option is, is to let somebody else get the inheritance, to be quite honest. You see, one of two things is going to happen. Well, one of three. One, France gets the inheritance, and then you push on France, you get both. Simple. Then you have anybody else gets it. Let's say the Palatinate ends up getting it. The Palatinate, the Austrians, if they're the emperor, would make the Palatinate give up all of this land, and they almost always do, and France will get a core on anything that's left. That includes this land up here and all this land down here. You simply need to go in and attack Burgundy and get this land for France, and then vassalize whatever's left up here and reconquer their cores if you want to. If you want to keep your Austrian ally and he's the emperor, you can choose to simply give it all to France and then get it later. The third option is if it's Austria that does it, France still gets the cores. They still get them. They just declare war on Austria and Austria comes in and punches them. So you come down on France, force the personal union on them in the middle of the war if necessary, and then you can either go after the cores later or let them go. It's your call. But that's how you deal with the Burgundian Inheritance, because I can't really show you without starting a new game. Now that that's been talked about, let's pivot into the other things we need to talk about. Now, all of the time that I have been spending in the interim is best shown simply by declaring war on France. And it really doesn't matter what war goal I do. I want Naples out, so I'll do that. And then I'll call Portugal in down here, because now Naples isn't in the war. Now, let's talk about what I've been doing. Because I've mainly been consolidating England. Now, I, do, I did take over the Isles, gave it to Scotland because they had cores on it, allowing me now to remove Scotland from the map because I'm not going to get a decision that just easily removes them. I need to manually integrate them. I did get Orkney as part of a war that Austria called me into against Denmark. It was a succession war. And they gave me the land. Now, usually I'll declare on this and take all of these islands here, but they just gave me Orkney, which is perfectly fine because the idea about it is getting myself colonial range from Iceland, which I didn't really need. But more importantly, it's at least getting one province that has Norwegian culture and Norwegian cores. If you go through your mission tree, you can buy it for 200 ducats, which, I mean, okay, but you, it loses the core. So you want this core because eventually Denmark will try and integrate Norway or somebody will conquer Norway, and this gives you a quick way to release them and reconquer all of that land without much difficulty because it's right there. You don't really need a whole lot of naval dominance in order to take it. Now, the rest of what I've been doing is basically just some light colonizing. I'm just starting to breach into Greenland. I'm just starting to reach down into the Caribbean, though I don't have range to get down there yet because, as you can see, I'm really low on tech, but I'm getting there. As long as you can get to see the Caribbean and see the eastern United States, you'll be fine. The reason why is, is because, as you can see here, now that I've declared war on France, I can complete the Hundred Years' War. But do not click this event yet, because you can still go down your mission tree to discovering the Americas. This gives you two more decisions that you need to do before you click this button. The first is the Sugar Act. Go ahead and just pass this, and what this will do is it will give you colony development boost for 10 years, so you get stronger colonies, and why not take advantage of that while you have it? And then you have the other one in there, which is Colonial Venture. And I'll explain Colonial Venture later for anybody that doesn't know what it is yet, but basically, I'm now getting one of the strongest things 
for the Great British Path as the Angevin Path. It's now mine. It just, it's mine, period. So I'm going to go ahead and bribe, bribe, bribe. Now I have that done. And now I can just go down the Angevin Path and I get to keep the benefits I just got while also going down the Angevin Path. So now I need to fight France. And this is going to be a quick and easy little fight because I just need to piece them out. I don't want to take anything. And the reason why is because now I have a personal union CB on them that lasts for 25 years. So I just need to piece them out so I can get the true started so I can go do something else. So I'm going to get them willing to piece out and I'll bring you guys back and I'll see you then. What's up everybody? So for this week I'm giving away a CD key for Aragami 2. If you want a copy of this game just leave a comment below that includes the word Aragami somewhere in the comment. And at the end of the week I'll go through all the comments and pick one of those comments that do include it at random and reply to it with a CD key that you could enter into Steam and get the game. Now obviously anybody can see my comments and my replies so make sure you turn on your notifications because if somebody else sees it first, even if I replied to you and they put it into their Steam account first, it's their game, not yours. With that being said, let's get back to the video. And welcome back. I realized that I clicked through those missions really quick without explaining how I was clicking through them without actually doing some of the requirements. The second mission in the mission tree requires that you have no land on the continent or you own both Ko and Kotentin, and you have marketplaces in them. Just by having a marketplace there, you complete that mission. And as you can see here, I don't have one in Kot, I just have it in Kotentin. So, 100 ducats, you're done with that mission. Then there's revoking the Vilnage estate privilege, the one at the beginning that you need 40 crown land to get rid of. Got rid of that. The next one is you have to have 50 ships, I have that, an admiral, and you have to be at your naval force limit, which I'm over my force limit to get to the 50. And then the last one is simply you have to at least discovered one province in the Caribbean and in Eastern America. So just get colonial ideas, go take a look, explore over there just so you can get it now. And if you want to now get rid of these ideas and pick up exploration and colonization later, you can. I think that the colonial venture though is way too strong especially if you can get range down here given the amount of gold that is down here it's just a little too much to pass up with that being said i'm gonna go back to france see you soon and welcome back everybody so i just wanted to point out i am now going back in on france to go ahead and get this personal unification done and as you can see it's not exactly a fair fight i have poland coming all the way over here to beat them up so i'm gonna go ahead and get this done and i'll talk to you guys when it's over see you then and welcome back everybody so i wanted to briefly cover what colonial venture is so colonial venture gives you an event whenever you complete a colony anywhere in the world old world new world it doesn't matter and basically wherever the colony is at any of the trade goods it could give it gives you a choice on taking that and replacing what it rolled now what it happened to roll in this case sugar is free period but as you can see, I can pick anything else I want. So if I wanted to produce tobacco instead, I can have it do it for 30 ducats and 2.5 admin points. This cost goes up the more you select that option to change the trade good. So if I keep telling it to make tobacco crops, it will keep doing so at an increased cost every single time. But that's fine, because generally speaking, who's going to keep clicking the same thing over and over again. Well, if you look over here, there'd be gold. And you can pick gold. So once you get over here where there's gold and gold and gold and gold, in fact, let me find a gold province just to show you how much gold is over here. All of these provinces can spawn gold, and since you have the ability to force it to spawn gold, there you go. So does here, so does here, and all along here, all through Brazil, you want to get these zones just so you can force spawn gold constantly. So grab what zones you can as a Catholic. If you're going to be flipping to something else, you can ignore the Treaty of Tordesillas. And just like before, you're probably going to be betraying Portugal and Castile at some time in the future. But for now, we're friends. Either way, as you can see, I'm improving relations with two people over here that have not been having a good game because 
I might be able to use that to my advantage. And let's peace out France. So of course I'm going to get the Union. I'm going to take as much money as I can. In fact, I'm not going to take any money because that mainly goes to other people. And as you can see, no real coalition. Unlike the games of Great Britain, I don't have to worry about that because by now I also have this 10% reducing it. And I've set my merchants in the Champagne area, the Rhine area, and then Lubeck to burn off any aggressive expansion I have been making just so nobody will hate me. Now I can piece this out, and again, no one's going to care. And then I can just go back over here and start improving relations with France to get them happy again and be able to continue with the game. So I'm going to go ahead and vassalize Savoy. I'm going to try and vassalize Milan and get their cores back from them because that'll let me start expanding into Italy. That's my next step, unless Castile decides they really want to tussle with me. That's going to be my next target, and then I'll swing into Iberia afterwards. For now, though, I'll see you later. And welcome back, everybody. So I wanted to briefly show you what it costs to four-spawn a gold mine. This is the second one. The first one's 100 ducats. So every time you do it, it's going to increase by 100 ducats until, well, you stop doing it because it's no longer effective. I do want to point out, though, that while this stuff over here is all a part of the Colombia trade node, this stuff is part of Mexico. So if you can get these four provinces all of which should, again, have gold, you should be able to spawn four gold mines to use for yourself, not relying on any trade ships to get it to you. So whether you have the Caribbean isn't really necessary for these four, but for everything else, you would need to have the Caribbean. So I'm going to go ahead and keep dropping gold mines in this region because absolutely going to do that. And yeah, I'm currently fighting Switzerland to get back the cores for my new subjects. I'll see you guys in a little bit. And welcome back, everybody. So I have formed the Angevin Kingdom, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things that you guys should be aware of before I wrap up the guide. The first of which is if you are going Anglican, be aware that if you pick the Evangelize to the world, you do lose three diplomatic reputation when that happens. This is really important because when it happens, It'll also destroy your opinion with any Catholic countries around you, namely Burgundy, France, Ireland. So their opinion goes down, which makes them disloyal, and your diplomatic reputation goes down, which makes them disloyal. And if it causes too much liberty desire to go up, they can become rebellious, and your rivals, if they are not on a truce, can instantly support their independence. So make sure you pause the game so you can click that if you're going to, and then make sure they're loyal again before you unpause, just to make sure the Ottomans don't do anything nasty. And yes, that absolutely happened playing this game, because I forgot it does that. That's kind of one. Two, whenever you're pushing into Italy, just be sure you keep in mind, there are going to be a lot of small little tags that you can punch out of people that you can pick up as easy vassals, or people you can attack, like in this case, I have the Pope hostage, and I'm going to be feeding back the Pope's land from Castile, because, well, Castile here decided to eat a lot of the Pope's land. And I'll give it back to him before I remove the Pope, because I'm Anglican. That's kind of what I should be doing. As far as Spain is concerned, they are really going to be your primary target, because once you remove Spain and take over all their colonies, you're pretty much the undisputed champion of Western Europe, and then you can just keep pushing to the east without anyone really being able to stop you. And the easiest way to do that is to simply take Navarra right here, and then right here, because this is Aragon core, Aragonese culture, you can release Aragon there, and feed them back every bit of provinces that they started off with. And then by the time you are hitting the Age of Absolutism, that'll be integrated, so will Burgundy and everything else, allowing you to just straight eat the rest of what is originally Castile. And Portugal, the same thing is pretty much true. You're going to be holding off on them other than the colonizing until they have finished colonizing most areas because that way they are helping you to get everything. And then you can walk in and eat them once the Age of Absolutism happens. As far as Germany is concerned, again, it's once you get to a certain point, you can just start vassalizing people. You don't actually have to do a whole lot of conquest, though if somebody really wants your land, you're never going to vassalize them. It's just not going to happen. 
but you could pick off a couple of the electors and then destroy the HRE without a whole lot of difficulty at this point because Austria, who is the emperor, is still way weaker than you could ever be at this point. The last thing I really want to talk about is the Civil War disaster that you can get as either England, Angevin Kingdom, or Great Britain. So let's just briefly talk about that for a second. Just like Poland and the Commonwealth, once you reach the Age of Absolutism, England, the Angevin Kingdom, or Great Britain all have their own special disaster that follow them into it known as the English Civil War. If you know history, you know that this is a devastating conflict that ripped across England, causing a lot of pain and suffering. And EU4 does not do it justice at all. I mean, at all. Right now, I'm sitting on 130,000 troops in the field, with 52,000 manpower reserves. The rebellion would be great if it was based off of my power, my development, or my troop numbers, or something along those lines. It's not. Instead... It just spawns stack sizes. You get a, a size 3, period. But if you have more than 30 provinces, it gives you an additional size 2. So it's ending up about forty to 60,000 troops. So I either triple them or double them now. And I have another 100 years before I'll have to worry about it. And within that time, I'll probably double my force limit and capacity by then. So I'm really not afraid of any rebels. And you really shouldn't have to worry about it either, but I did want to point out that if you don't care about the parliament, you can get rid of it and never have to face this civil war. So if you're in a, say, multiplayer game, you can get rid of this disaster without having potential rebels spawn and then people attacking you. All you need to do, because you cannot avoid it if you do not get rid of English monarchy, as you look here, it doesn't let you flip it over. You are locked into it. All you have to do is come down here, flip out of monarchy into a republic or into a theocracy and then flip back now i don't have the point right now to do this i don't believe i might actually give me one second this flips you out you are now a republic you get the same amount of reform points that you had before so let's just go down and then once i have the ability to flip out because as you see here going to cost me stability i need to get up to i believe three in order to flip out so no nope, i don't have enough points oh well either way i cannot flip out to show you but once i flip oh i do never mind i can then simply not choose the english monarchy so long as i don't choose it and i choose anything else it will not fire that's all i need to do i just need to not have this specific government reform and with that, you're able to avoid the disaster and avoid people attacking you during it. Though, again, really don't think that's going to be a very big problem in most circumstances for you guys. With that being said, that covers the end of an empire. Just at this point, use Spain against them, their size, and Aragon, because it's half their land. After you take Aragon from them, they're no longer a threat whatsoever. But thank you guys for watching. I'm going to continue making guides. If you like this content, like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.